celebrate the God of wonders that is working wonders right now in your family in your career where you don't know lift up your voice give him a shout give him a shout give him a shout something is going on right now in your favor God is orchestrating a chain of events in your favor right now right now right now right now right now all of a sudden let there be an overturning let there be an overturning let wonders erupt let wonders erupt let wonders erupt all of a sudden press on a helper press on a helper press on a helper press on a helper all of a sudden a new pages of the glory of the power of the grace of god right now 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 let your amen turn now wherever you are i wanted to hear this I want you to know that it was the psalmist when he was describing about the works of God, he calls them wonders. A wonders of God, a people of God. When he says, when I look at all that you have created, the wondrous works of your hands. People of God, they are called wonders because in the beginning he created. People of God, if there is no creativity to it, if it is not a new people of God, it might not just be a wonder. Lift up your right hand and declare after me, say by the creative power of God in my life I say I am a partaker of divine vain nature I am a partaker of divine nature, by the creative power of God in my life I decree and declare let the new appear in my life, let the new appear in my life let the new appear in my life. Let your amen thunder. Let your amen thunder. Let your amen thunder. Let your amen thunder. People of God, I want you to understand that in the Acts of the Apostles, the Bible says the more they threatened them, the more they walked against them, the more they fought them, the more wonders multiplied. The more the wonders multiplied. So, sir, if you want wonders to multiply, bring me a negativity. So, once the devil arises to oppose you, which means it is time for God to multiply the wonders, notice that in Egypt, the more Pharaoh fought hard, the more the Lord multiplied the wonders, the more the Lord multiplied the wonders. If your two hands can be lifted to God, I announce for everything that has come to oppose the place of God in your life, let the wonders of God be multiplied. 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 Let your amen turn down. Let your amen rise. Let your amen rise. Let your amen rise. Let your amen rise people of God notice that a whole lot of the old covenant in the old covenant it was all about God doing the wonders God would do the wonders by himself when he came to the new covenant God decided to use you people like you and I we became the ambassadors of God's wonder God will not come down from heaven to do the wonders but he has empowered you in that office that you are you are a wonder in your family you are a wonder in Nigeria you are a wonder wonder in the world you are a wonder lift up your right and say today i proclaim to heaven and earth i am an ambassador of the wonders of god let your amen thunder let your amen thunder say i am an ambassador of the wonders of god let your amen rise higher let your amen rise higher let your amen thunder let your amen thunder let your amen thunder if you believe it thunder you louder amen Amen. And in the book of Revelation, when God decided to show his wonders, uh, the Bible says he showed his wonders uh, like thunder, like vapor, like smoke, uh, like fire. He uh, as your two hands are lifted, uh, I announce uh, in different ways, uh, in different ways, uh, in different seasons, uh, at different times, uh, at the sound of your amen, uh, let the wonders of God be revealed. Uh, concerning that approval, uh, concerning that recommendation, uh, 
concerning that line in your career concerning your business in the place of that helper on the sound of your amen let the wonders of God be seen 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 let your amen thunder let your amen rise higher let your amen rise higher let your amen thunder the Bible begins to say, I and the children the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and wonders. There's a generation that wants to stop a sign, which means they are a pointer to a wonder. But there is another generation that says, I will not just be a pointer, I will be the wonder. I will not just be the one that will talk about the wonder. There are explainers and there are demonstrators. People of God, you can either choose to be a sign or you will choose to be the wonder yourself. Or you will say, I will explain and I will demonstrate all at the same time there will be a theory and there will be a practical I will both teach the theory and I will still show them the practical at the sound of your amen I announce let the Lord use you to demonstrate his wonders receive a rhino 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 let your amen turn down the Bible speaks about the woman that was clothed with the sun and having stars on her head. And the Bible says immediately there was another a great wonder. Another wonder appeared and that was the dragon. But what that wonder did not realize that there was a part of the script of God that was going to rubbish the negative wonder. That was going to rubbish the negative wonder. Anything that has happened to you that has made you wonder. And wonder what kind of thing is this? What is going on in my life? By the script, the Almighty, a script of victory, a script of triumph, a script of a new season. At the sound of your amen, let the wonder of God in your life swallow it right now. Let your amen thunder. Let your amen thunder. Let your amen thunder. Let your amen rise higher. Let your amen rise higher. Lift up your right hand, thunder. I am a wonder. Wherever you are, people of God, would you help me open your scriptures? Open your scriptures very quickly. The devil is a liar. Open your scriptures to the book of Revelation, chapter 4. The book of Revelation chapter 4. Hallelujah. For what our God cannot do. Revelation chapter 4. And we're going to read from verse 1. Allow us to just read from verse 1 to verse 11. Hallelujah. From verse 1 to verse 11. Kabaroshira. I don't know who you are. The Spirit of God says to me, you had a, you had a breast cancer scare some time ago. And it looks like it is back again. As your amen will turn down, I decree it is cancelled right now. I say it is cancelled right now. I don't know who you are. People think you're on the throne, but there's no evidence to it. People think your life is good, but you don't have an evidence. At the sound of your amen, I decree, carry the evidence that comes with the throne. I wish your amen will turn down louder. I wish your amen were thunder louder. I don't know who you are. You are here. You started two jobs. Kabaron de Boshadi Adabasindelea. I could have anyone you start, they will cancel. Anyone you start, they will cancel. But listen, all the cancellations as your amen were thunder, let it be reversed right now. 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 I see it in an open vision. Someone who should be flying. I see that your wings have been taken out of you. Your wings have been taken out of you and dropped to the floor. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You are not supposed to move normally. That No, 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 no. It's not your destiny. It is not your destiny to move like other mortals. I know what I am saying. You are not meant to move like the other people that you call your mates, that you call your contemporaries. You are not like them. If your amen will turn down, I am Announce, receive wings to show her. 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 Let your amen thunder. 
Why am I seeing 2009 written in front of me? 2009, uh, at the amen of this congregation, what under anyone that is in 2023, but the devil has planted your destiny in 2009. And they are stealing these years from 2009 to 2023, deleting them from your life. Record the At the sound of your amen, let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed. Let it be reversed. Let it be reversed. Let your amen thunder. Wherever you are, I don't know who this is for. Lay your hands on your mouth. Put your hands on your mouth as your amen will thunder. They will never reject what you will see. I am not speaking to everyone, but this is this is someone's word. I said they will never reject what you will say. <laughs> they will soon ask you, where did you get this from? Where did you get this from? Which is this thing that you are doing now? Everything you say will be, listen, they will never reject what you will say. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. He's making your tongue like the pen of a ready writer. He's making your tongue like the pen of a ready writer. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Let your amen turn down. I announce it is done. We read the book of Revelation chapter 4. We read from verse 1 to verse 11. Revelation chapter 4 from verse 1 to 11. I don't know who you are used to see things in your dream. But right now you are dreaming useless dreams. Things that don't make sense. Your dreams used to, used to be very revelational. Before anything happens, you will see it in your dream. But right now you don't know what happened to it. As your amen was thunder, the Lord is restoring it. 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 I don't know who I am led to pray for. May God change your circle. May God change your circle. May God bring you the people you need. You will not look for them, but they will find you. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Let your amen turn now. Revelation chapter 4 from verse 1 to 11. Please forgive me. This is the way I am led in this service. Lift up your two hands. The Spirit of God said there's a mantle of generational relevance. I'm not just talking about a now relevance. The Spirit of God called it a generational relevance. Things will come and go. But as your amen will turn that you will always be relevant. Kings will come and go, but you will always be relevant. Systems will come and go, but you will always be relevant. Receive your mantle of generational relevance. Generational relevance. Generational relevance. Generational relevance. Generational relevance. Let your amen turn down. I announce it is done. Please, let's read the book of Revelation, chapter 4, and we'll read from verse 1 to 11. Like a mass choir, as is the custom of this house, for us to rise for the reading of God's word. We'll read from verse 1 to 11 at the count of three. One, two, three. After these, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up, Heda, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper, and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, and sat like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders, seating clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes, before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had the face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, 
Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Our Father, in the next few minutes, we ask that you make your word and your will known unto us. Father, we ask, let there be none of any man but all of you. Father, we ask that you have your way. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let a lover of the Lord thunder a louder. Amen. I wish your amen were thunder louder. Please take your seat in the presence of the Lord. People of God, you will agree with me that in life, there are eaters and there are hooks. Permit my English now. Hookers. So people of God, there are those who can tell you that a meal is nice or is not nice, but they have no idea how to cut vegetable. Am I communicating? People of God, they are just like that. Interestingly, there are those that can cook a lot, but they don't know how to eat a lot. Am I communicating? But there are also those who can both cook and eat. If you're in that group, can I hear an amen? So people of God, interesting as it may seem, everybody talks about the wonders of God. But let me say that the wonders of God are not spontaneous acts of the supernatural. They're intentional deliverables from the kingdom to someone who is living intentionally to make it happen. Let me say this. There can be random acts of God and they can be seasonal. But there is consistent act of God that only comes from an intentional living. So people of God, randomly you can get a breakthrough. And for some people, it will take them seven years, sometimes six months, sometimes two months, and then. But there are those who consistently live in seeing the wonders of God. You have not been called to see random wonders. And so that is the reason why Revelation chapter 4 becomes necessary for you right now. So that you know, how do I live in that realm where wonders are not random? How do I live in that realm where wonders are not just um, a byword? But they have become a lifestyle. They've become who I am. They've become what it is. People of God, a man like you and I kept dishing out wonders to Pharaoh back to back. Gave Pharaoh wonders. Pharaoh was trying to recover from this. He gave Pharaoh this. Gave Pharaoh that. Gave Pharaoh that. Gave Pharaoh that until Pharaoh gave up. People of God, let me say this to you. Whether you call them millennials or call them Gen Z, but you will agree with me that the way the world is metamorphosing is getting to that place where if you've got nothing to show me, then I have got nothing to believe. Am I communicating? And people of God, this is the way. So I am going to say just five things in the service that will help you come to that place where you know that I am not just someone who is going to experience a random wonder of God, but I am someone who knows the technology that makes wonders happen. And then every now and then, it's like when you know the switch, where they used to switch on and then um, you plug your electric iron and then it will become hot, you iron your clothes. People of God, after a while, sometimes you might be turning a gist somewhere as you're gisting and all that. You are just like, hey. so you remember that thing I'm telling you, I know, and then you're taking whatever it is, the plug, and then you're finding the where the switch, and then you just get it, it just works. And then without even opening your eyes, you see it work. Am I communicating? And so people of God, John the Revelator, 
becomes a huge template, especially as we find in Revelation chapter 4, what it means for a man to get in that place where you begin to walk wonders and you begin to see wonders happen in front of you. The Bible says, and John says, and after this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up here and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. People of God, take me to my first one, please. We're not going to be in a hurry. And people of God, I need you to understand that John said there was a door opened in heaven. Look at your neighbor, say door in heaven. I need you to say it again, say door in heaven. I need you to say it again, say door in heaven. Let me say this. I know you are conversant with the doors on earth. But men who operate in wonders that shock their generation are men who understand the door of heaven. People of God, the doors of heaven are doors of the supernatural. The doors of heaven are doors that men gain access into by fellowship and communion. The doors of heaven, people of God, are doors that even when men lock physical ones for you, they cannot lock that one. People of God, that door of heaven is the access that even gives you the door, the access to the doors of men. The doors of heaven is the doors that control all doors on earth. John said, I heard, I looked and I saw a door was opened in heaven. Now, notice carefully, the door was already open, has always been open. But people of God, until John saw the door, he was not asked to enter. So, sir, the access for you to make great things happen has already been opened. But unfortunately, because you are not consistent in your work with God, you've not been able to access it. The door has been opened. This, there's a new season door that you needed to plug into in the realm of the spirit is already open. There's a door of boundless possibilities already open. But people of God, the weakness of your prayer life cannot help you assess it. There's a door already open. People of God, the lack of consecration will not let you remember I'm talking about how to become a person of wonder. People of God, even if you like quote the scripture, I and the children the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and wonder. You can quote it in the next five years. If you do not know how to assess the door, people of God, it's already, remember I'm not talking about a door that is closed. A door you need to bang on, bang on, it's already open. But fellowship will help you access it. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Fellowship will help you access it. God begins to, and they, you, you know John was told. He said, come, 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 John. Come up here and I will show you things that is going to happen hereafter. Which means, John, I want to hand you the dossier of your tomorrow. John, I want to show you your tomorrow so that you can have a voice in it. John, I want to invite you to a boardroom meeting so that we can sit down. If I show you about tomorrow, you can now have a voice and say, Lord, can this thing be adjusted this way? John, let me show you tomorrow so that you will be the surprise to your tomorrow. Your tomorrow cannot surprise you. Am I communicating? But please, the people of God, notice that there is a door that must be accessed. People of God, you cannot know every door. You know every door on earth, but you don't know the door that is in heaven. So you cannot know every rich man's door, every influential man, influential man's door, but there is a door to divine possibilities, which you don't, this is how men work wonders. Go, show me a man who is operating in high realm of spiritual understanding. I will show you a man that has understood that there are doors that men access that is bigger than the doors of men. And people of God, that door that they access in the heavenlies is the same door that will unlock the door doors of men. Am I communicating? Yes, 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 yes. Look at your neighbor for me and tell your neighbor this word is for you. Tell your neighbor the door is already open. Tell your neighbor, say the door is already open. I need you to say it again. Say the door is already open. And tell your neighbor you need to access that door. I need you to say it again. Say the door is already open. Now declare after me. Say I arise. I access the door. If you understand it, thunder it louder. Amen. 
However, people of God, let me remind you that I can get really specific with these doors, as it were. I want you to understand there are seasons in your walk with God. There are new doors God will unlock first in the spirit before they become your physical reality. So, sir, there are doors already open, but then again, there are dossiers for the manifestation of that door that need to be told you before they become realities on earth. Sir, there are doors that were opened in the spirit first for some people, but they did not understand the techniques. They did not understand the essence, the purpose, the focus, the reason why the Lord opened those doors in the realm of the spirit. And when they began to see the manifestations of those doors on earth, they began to abuse the doors because they did not understand the reason why the doors were open, people of God. And this is why sometimes in prophecy, God opens a door for you. Mark my word. Not God gives you a prophecy of a door that every time God speaks to you, that means the door has been opened. Now, I need to say this. Some of you, if you've ever heard God say to you, you are going international, it means that the door has been opened. Prophecy opens doors. Understanding brings it to manifestation. Am I communicating? And so, people of God, this door already, he says, I saw a door was opened in heaven. However, notice again, I say, men do not walk into new things until they assess the first spiritual door that has been opened on the subject matter they desire. And he said, the first voice I heard was the voice of a trumpet. Touch your neighbor for me, say the voice of a trumpet. Say it again like you mean it. Say the voice of a trumpet. Say it again, the voice of a trumpet. The Lord wants to help someone right now. Hear me. You will not make a mistake that will make your enemy relevant. This prayer is for someone. I don't know who you are, but the Lord said I should declare. You will not make a mistake that will make your enemy relevant. If you believe it, can you thunder a louder? Amen. So what they want to do now is to send you an arrow of mistake. Any arrow of mistake sent against you as your amen will thunder, they will make that mistake. I wish your amen will thunder like fire. I said they will make that mistake. They will make that mistake. They will make that mistake. Let your amen thunder. Take your seat. And John said that the first voice I heard was like the voice of a trumpet. I've often told you in this church that whenever you hear the sound of a trumpet, it is the sound usually of a change of season. John did not say, I heard trumpet. John said, I heard the voice of a trumpet. He said, it were, um, he said, I heard, I said, and the first voice rather, which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. The voice was talking, but it was sounding trumpetish. And if a trumpet is a change of season, the diffusion of a voice and a trumpet means that as a season changes, you need to hear a voice. Let me say this. When the season of your life changes, or if God has brought you to a new season, always request for the voice while you are in this season. You may not walk in wonders. You might only walk in your own manufactured template because seasons change and you have no template for it. Seasons change and you don't know why God has brought me to this new season. Seasons change and you think it is to advance your own agenda. That's why God brought you there. No, sir. John said, as soon as, as, soon as the door was open, I heard a voice. And the voice was telling me seasons have changed. Seasons have changed. Because it was the voice of a trumpet. Remember I said a trumpet had to announce change of seasons. As soon as the door opened in heaven, seasons have changed. Seasons have changed. That was what the voice was saying to me. That was a voice I was hearing. And it was like the voice of a trumpet. People of God. You know the greatest um, tragedy of life is for a man to be in a new season operating with old instructions. I want you to understand. I don't know how many of you. 
I'm talking to um, people who are born around my side in 19 Kolobum. I want you to. So I'm not exactly talking to um, um, the Gen Zs. Or I'm not even talking to the millennials, right? So if you ever, if you ever know what a JVC TV is here, did you know JVC? Did you see JVC in your life? Huh? Is there still JVC in the market? No, no. Uh-huh. There's no JVC in the market. Okay, okay, let me break it down. Let me help the millennials. I'm not even sure they will understand. If you ever knew what it meant to use chaka 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 to set the channels, right? Did you, did you ever understand that? Right? Now, imagine you're having that kind of TV now. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. And then they brought that kind of TV in your house. And then next thing is um, you go and get a remote. Or let me say it differently. You have these new televisions now. That sometimes they can even confuse the owner. Right? The new, very new television and all of that. Full of God. Some things are demonic. I don't even say some of the things, you know. You know, like the way they used to call Alexia and uh, all of that. Yeah. Are you, are you aware there are televisions they used to call now? <laughs> you have not seen anything. They used to call the television and all of that. Some, some televisions answer by the snap of the finger. It's not one snap. It's actually three eye. And as soon as they did three, three, television came on. I said, this is demonic. Nobody will convince me otherwise. Nobody will convince me otherwise. He's a demon. Who does that? But people of God. Now imagine with that television as it were. And then you come there and say, eh, I, I want to know the channel. Let me tune to the channel. Show me where they used to tune channel. Yeah. People of God. How can you be in a new season with an old instruction? Let me even shock you further. Do you know that there are televisions manufactured in 2017? You cannot use their remote for television manufactured in 2023. And then you're pressing it and say, it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. All these people, what they like is to deceive someone. Okay? Drop that remote and go and find the remote that that television was manufactured for. Some of you are like that. You are in a new season. But you are operating with old instruction. You are operating with old revelation. You are operating with the old you. We are operating with the old understanding. The, you, can't, you will never be a wonder. You will never be a wonder. Because people of God, when they think they know you, a new instruction from God will marvel them. When they think they already have you under keeps, I know you. I know what you're able to do. I know what Makin de Sotoba. God drops one new thing. God gives you a new instruction. People of God, some people have so monitored you that they've become familiar spirits. Because they sit back and say, I know how to trigger him. I know how to trigger her. I will gaslight her. She will say this. She will say that. She will do this. She will do that. But people of God, when you're in a new season, when they gaslight you the way they used to gaslight, the Spirit of God says, say nothing. And they look at you and wonder, this is not her. Why is she not saying something? In your mind, you will tell yourself, don't they know that I know that I'm in a new season? And every new season requires new instruction. So I am no longer your victim. Am I communicating? Let me say this. Is a setup for your downfall if you've ever found yourself in a new season and you've not found your instruction. Did you hear what I just said? Let me tell you, the Moses that led the flock of Jethro, as soon as he was supposed to lead the children of Israel, the instructions had changed. Moses, what you are leading this time around, you are not leading goats and sheep. You are leading humans. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. The instructions are different. And that is why God, you know how it is when a sheep does something stupid, you take that and Iba, and then flog them. And God said to Moses, speak to the rock. Moses smote the rock. I said, God said, Moses, you, you, you think I'm that sheep? You think I am that sheep? Moses got angry and all that. Looked at them because he's not used to taking, he took that thing and scattered. This is a new season. 
Moses, this was exactly the same thing that you did. When you saw two, uh, uh, what's it called? Israelites fighting. Uh, I'll be two Egyptians. I'll be an Israelite and an Egyptian fighting. And then you came. Next thing, you showed your anger and all of that. You don't know you are in a new season. Let me make you understand this. It was the behavior of an old season which Moses carried into the new season that made God say to Moses, oh yeah, go to the mountain. Go and look at the land. You will not enter into it. So Moses, listen. You were in an old season. Carry the behavior into a new season. What you did not realize is that after what you call a new season, there will yet be another new season so the way you treated the season that brought you in will determine whether you will be qualified for yet another new season so your behavior in between new seasons in between seasons will determine whether you are moving up so when i say get instructions i'm not just saying so that you'll enjoy this season but because there's a new season coming lay your two hands on your head every instruction you need Every instruction you need for a new season, at the sound of your amen, I decree, receive it of the Lord. I wish your amen were thunder louder than that. I say, receive it of the Lord. I say, receive it of the Lord. I say, receive it of the Lord. Nothing missing and nothing broken. Let your amen thunder louder. Powers that cause men to be in new season. But then again, they will be operating with old instructions. I announce, let it be reversed from your life. Let it be broken right now. Let your amen thunder louder. People of God. And it says, I heard a voice talking with me, which said unto me, come up either. Which means, sir, it's time to go up. It's time to go up. I am no come and see that and do not forget in this wonder thing is in levels is in levels from where you are don't forget by revelation chapter one god was already showing um uncle john by revelation chapter two god was showing him things by revelation chapter three god was showing him but by revelation chapter four there were higher things to show him God told him, come up. Come up. I know you've been seeing things. I know you've been seeing things. But let me tell you, there's a shift coming. It will be dependent on how you come up. So when God begins to make some crazy demands on you, it's because that God wants to take a madisha. There's a new sale. When God says, come up, come up, come up. Do not sit back and say, God, why me? Why are you not telling others? Why should it be me that will? So there's a reason why he's telling you. There's a reason. Come up in your sacrifice. Come up with this. Come up with that. Come up with that. And you're saying, I'm I the only one that will be coming on. There's a reason your life is not like them. People of God, they will soon fizzle out. Your own is not for fizzling out. People of God, you are building an eternal legacy. Am I communicating? Uh, call your name and say, Jerry, say go up. And that's what God is saying to someone here. Please do not forget what I said. There's a door that's been opened. And this door can only be assessed with fellowship and communion. People of God, understand that the voice of the trumpet is the voice that is saying that seasons have changed. Do not also forget that the next thing I'm saying is that it is time to go up. He say, is that come up, come up, come up, Peter. Don't stay where you used to stay. Come up, Peter. There's so much I have in store for you. Come up, Peter. I want you to know that things will never remain the same. Sir, you need to come up. For some of you, God is saying, come up, come up, come up. For some of you, God is saying, come up, come up, come up. For some of you, God is saying, come up, come up. But whichever way it is, by all means, don't remain where you are. Otherwise, you will still see the same evidence. Don't stay where you used to be. Otherwise, you'll still see the same thing you've been seeing. Somebody help me lay your hand on your own head. Call your name and say, Jerry. I need you to declare it. Say, go up. Say it again. Say, Jerry. Say it again. Say, go up. Shout it again. Say, Jerry. Shout it again. Say, go up. And people of God, 
This was what God was saying. If you want elementary school wonder, people of God, remain on the ground. But there are seasons where you understand, my life must worth much more than this. My life must want you need to go up. Every day cannot be 10 minutes prayer. You need to go up. Every day cannot be, oh Lord, you know, I'm tired. No, no, you need to go up. You need to go up. Every day cannot be giving the same offering and seed you used to give. You need to go up. Some point to tell God, I, I understand. Remember, this is a season. You can't remain where you are. You need to come up. Am I communicating? Say, come up here. Don't stay where you are. You can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be the man that you were in 2022. 2023 is ending. It's about time to go up. You can't be hanging out with the same kind of people who add no values to your life, who hold daggers in their hands and smiles on their lips. People of God, you need to come up. Come up from them. Live with them where they are because there is something else that God wants to show you. The Bible says, come up here and I will show you the things which must be hereafter. If I rewrite that scripture, don't come up and I will not show you. So what you have not seen is dependent on where you are. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. So your height determines what you will see or what you will not see. Come up here and I will show you. Basada. So Lord, if I have not seen this, something is wrong. Lord, if I have not noticed this, then something is wrong. Lord, if, how come this thing happened and I was in darkness? That means it might just be God saying to you, come up. You didn't see it because where you are is too low. God does not come down to, sir, there are those, when a child is learning to walk, the mother comes down to his level. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when a child is grown, the child comes to the mother, where the mother, I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Imagine you having a teenager in the house and you call the teenager and say, please come um, come to the sitting room. He said, mommy, please meet me in the bedroom. Huh? I shall know that there are some parents here that will go and meet them inside the bedroom. All these uh, Gen Z parents, you know, they will go and meet their children in there. Why? Why did you say I should meet you in the bedroom? Is there any problem? That's not the way they trained us that's not the, anyway the truth is that you won't even have mouth you won't even have mouth to say come and meet me in the bed no you you you, 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 you don't you don't have that kind of mouth and all that no look okay. they trained us well they trained us they trained us well and that's how i'm training my own well yes that's how we train we train our own well you see that thing i got my shiba that I that's a, they, we train well. Do you understand? If you do any harm, because what God cannot do. So my way of trying to say, people of God, you need to understand that as seasons begin to change, you need to come up. As seasons begin to change, you know, I can't remain where I used to be. As seasons begin to change, you cannot be in a new season with an old mindset. The Bible says, and I'll show you the things which must be hereafter. Verse 2. The Bible says, and immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. Sir, come up here. The transport to Hida is the spirit. Sir, come up here. It is not by climbing staircase. So come up here is become more in tune with the spirit. Come up here is concretize and make your real let your life go mad. Never you begin the day without you giving the Holy Spirit access. Give the Holy Spirit access into every area of your life. Tell the Holy Spirit, direct what I will say. Kobasanda, Spirit of God, be in every meeting. Spirit of God, tell me when to stop. Uh, Spirit of God, tell me what not to say. Spirit of God, please, if I want to keep quiet when I should talk, steer me to talk. Spirit of God, make uh, be my atmosphere. Let wrong people run out because of you that I carry. Spirit of God, the Bible says, and immediately I was in the Spirit. How did I go up here by the Spirit? People of God, 
Some of them have long legs. But what they don't have is by the Spirit. Did you hear what I just said? Some of them think they have connection. Come up here. He says, and immediately I was the spirit. I was in the spirit. We didn't see how he went up here. All we say is behold and behold. He has reached. Oh. He has reached. Come up here. Okay, when did you take off? When did you arrive? How was the journey? All we know is behold. Like by the next verse, he said, immediately I was in the, you have reached like that. People of God. Why are you competing with them in their own lane? In our lane, it is called the spirit lane. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Allow them to run their own. Stay in the spirit lane. People of God, by the time you reach there, it will take them another one year to meet you where you are. By the spirit lane, wake up and begin to arrange things in the spirit wake up and begin to align things by the spirit lane i want you to begin to people of god our lane is called what the spirit lane and this is how god has fashioned our lives don't let anything make you stay and this is how he arrived there remember the things how we become wonders the next verse and this is where i'm going to end the Bible says, He that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. In sight like unto an emerald. Yes, the next verse. The next. And round about the throne was four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Yes. I'm getting ready. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God. Yes. The next verse. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor is a matter of the throne. Say it again to your neighbor. Say is a matter of the throne. I want you to understand that in walking wonders there is a throne that is in your favor. Did you hear what I just said? It is not random. It is a throne that the Lord has opened your eyes to see how much this throne is speaking for you, working for you, affirming for you. It's a matter of the throne. Pack it in one side of your mind and then I tidy up with this. And the Bible says, the next verse, okay, and the first beast was like a lion. And the second beast was like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. I've spoken about this somewhere that I went to minister this week. But people of God, let me share with you that this particular thing in the book of Revelation was what Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel chapter 10. And when Ezekiel said that I, I, I saw a cherub that had four faces. And he said one had the face of a man. One of the faces was like the face of a man, the face of an eagle, the face of a, an ox, and then the last one was the face of an eagle. Lion, ox, man, eagle. You see, they had the people of God. And this is how I'm going to end, by letting you know, you can never walk in wonder until you carry those four faces. I don't have all the time to explain it, but I want you to know that the face of this if my generation sees only the face of a man with you you are not a wonder sir if all they see is the face of a lion you are not a wonder if they see you only with the face of an ego you are not a wonder people of god i need you to understand whether as a lion whether as a ox whether as an ego whether as a man these faces have to be there that is what makes you a wonder. Remember, I was telling you, permit my, because I'm looking for another English to use, I can't find. I'm telling you the behind the scene that works wonders. People of God, there are times when all you need in destiny is the face of a lion. And the lion roars. There are days when you understand that all you need might be the face of an ox. An ox is for sacrifice. People of God, you make sacrifice that produce the wonders. People of God, Sometimes all you need might just be the face of an ego. People of God, soaring 
over mountains, over the traditions of men, over negativity. Didn't they tell us that the more the wind opposes the ego, the more the ego soars? And maybe all you also need might be the face of a man in touch with the principle that govern life, relations, and socials. People of God, there are those who carry the face of lions, but they don't have the face of a man. Simple principles that make relationships better, they don't know. Everything, you can't roll into it. Some of them need a bit of humanity for you to get in there. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. People of God, you cannot be prayerful and rude. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. They don't walk on, they don't walk. You know, when, when, when we were growing up as Christians, they told us, they literally told us that the more you frown your face is, um, is directly proportional to how spiritual you are. Oh yes, everybody around us then were frowning. People will frown, people will frown. But for some reason, my mother found it very funny. You know, because I would sit with my mom in church and my mom would be telling me, look at this person. And my mother would whisper to me. Yeah. So there's some, with the church I grew up, we call our father, we call God, you know, um, one, our father, right? In, in our dial, in, in, in Igbo language. So there's a way. So my mother would ask me, that uh, evangelist, evangelist, and now ask me, is it God that is doing this person this thing? <laughs> my mother will laugh. Will laugh. My mother was a very mischievous person. And you now ask me, is it God that is doing it? You know, so because there's no need, you know, things that people should laugh and be happy. They will not, they will not now be happy. They will not now laugh with people. They will now be keeping very straight face like this. Life is already hard. Don't be squeezing face for nothing. <laughs> so we actually thought it was spirituality. But now that I am grown, I now know what it is. It was poverty. <laughs> Let me tell you, except you are possessed. Except you are possessed. Let me ask you, how many rich people have you seen that frown? Forget the ones that are arrogant. I'm, I'm not talking about the, the very arrogant ones. Those ones, they, they laugh very well. They, laugh, they feel like a, a frowning is a sign of where their status. I know that people of God, poverty can make you frown for no just cause. And people who think you are in the spirit, you are not in the spirit. You are just poor. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. But people of God, when God settles you, You'll be smiling for no reason. Anywhere you go to, you smile. You smile. You smile. People of God. But the important thing I want to say to you. Understand that these are the faces of wonder. If you're in a season where you should carry the face of an ox. Please don't carry the face of a lion. Because you will soon say. How come they taught us about the lion principles and it failed? Because it wasn't the season of a lion face. It was the season of an ox. That some of you, the season you are in now is a season of sacrifice. You keep making sacrifice. The season of a calf, you are making the sacrifice back to back. Some of you, the season you are in is the season of a lion. Don't stop roaring. Don't stop roaring. Don't stop roaring. This is the season where you are here about there. People of God, they want to tear you to shreds. They want to reduce your destiny to nothing. People of God, don't stop roaring. Some of you are in that season where God is saying, soar like an eagle. Soar like an eagle. Don't stop. Move above the mountains. But some of you might be in that season where God is saying, you need to become a bit more human. Be a human being. We know you love God. We know you pray. Or use Golan. Do you understand what I'm saying? We know you love God. But if your hair has stayed for a long time, Go and wash it and use it again. Be 
a human being. Some of you might just need to understand. But let me tell you, in some seasons, you might need all of these faces. In other seasons, you might need one. But if you don't hear the trumpet and the instructions that come from the voice, how will you know the face to use when you should use it? Rise on your feet wherever you are. Would you lift up your two hands to God? I decree over your life, it is a new season. I decree that things are no longer the same. For the Lord has gone ahead of you to make every crooked path straight. Let your amen thunder louder. I wish your amen will rise louder than that. Wherever you are, put together your offerings, your tithe and your partnership, and raise it before the Lord. Put together your offerings, your tithe and your partnership. In streams of joy, we stand to give to God because we understand we are offering to the king of kings and the lord of lords while you have it lifted up before the lord every spiritual attack over your family at the sound of your amen i decree it is broken the lord said to me when you come to the fourth service over your family we proclaim generational mercy Today we decree patterns, cycles, and curses, limitations, and embargoes at the sound of your amen, let it be broken right now. Amen. Families that their foundations are on a loose foundation. At the sound of your amen, I decree, let the power of the blood of Jesus strengthen your foundation. Zekodoshia, he asked me to declare again. Any wind, evil wind, blowing over your family, at the sound of your amen, let it be broken right now. He asked me to say in the service, celebrations and congratulations that has been deleted from families. At the sound of your amen, let it be restored right now. Today I decree, let there be massive healing and deliverance over your families. Powers that took away the greatness of the members of your family. Let it be broken right now. I announce it's a new season. I wish your amen were thunder seven times. With your offerings lifted before the Lord, I decree over your life. It is done. Amen. Receive a turnaround. Amen. Nothing missing and nothing broken. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.